What is going on everybody? I am back today to talk about a film that there's been a ton of buzz around lately after its opening weekend. The film is setting a whole bunch of records. It's made a ton of money in its opening weekend despite being released on streaming the exact same day. And this is based off of a video game property that I personally have no experience with other than the merchandising I've seen for it. I've seen little clips of the game online, but I've never actually played the game myself. I'm not really familiar with the lore. And what I find really interesting about this movie is how polarizing the reviews have been. There's been really extreme like half star, one star reviews and a lot of like five star reviews just praising the film and it's a pg-13 movie put out by blumhouse which as i've talked about in my reviews before i'm not always the biggest fan of blumhouse i feel like they do things often on the cheap because they know they'll make a ton of money especially if their movies pg-13 which it's smart business but i'm not always the biggest fan of their movies and obviously with this being based off of a property that a lot of people love you hope that there's going to be a lot of care and attention to detail put into it and i saw a lot of behind the scenes footage before i watched the movie about the practical effects of creating these animatronic characters and that had me very excited to watch the movie that it wasn't relying on CGI that they actually did practical effects they had people in suits they had puppeteers all this really cool work done with the animatronics so I was excited to watch it for that very reason and the movie I'm gonna be talking about with you today is Five Nights at Freddy's Five Nights at Freddy's is directed by Emma Tammy. Recently fired and desperate for work, a troubled young man named Mike agrees to take a position as a night security guard in an abandoned theme restaurant, Freddy Fazbear's Pizza, but he soon discovers that nothing at Freddy's is what it seems. So, as I said, no previous exposure to this material. I had no idea what I was getting into. And reading early reviews, I had a feeling that I was not going to be a big fan of this, but... Surprisingly, I enjoyed myself in this movie. I do not think it's a great film by any means. It obviously falls into a lot of cliches that we've seen in horror films before. But I think for something that's based off of a beloved property, I think that with the PG-13 rating, they're able to accomplish a lot and also build up good character development, despite some of the cheesiness in the film and some of the nonsensical parts that really don't add up when you think about it. But I'll break it down totally when I pick apart the film. So as the plot description states, we're introduced to Mike, played by Josh Hutcherson, and he lives at his house with his young sister Abby and you can tell he can't hold a job he's really struggling we find out that he's had some issues in his past at former jobs one of his relatives is trying to take custody of his sister and so he's really struggling to try to stay afloat and the other part of it is his sister she's kind of socially distant from other people she doesn't like talking to other kids at school she spends most of her time drawing and staying in her own world well one day he goes to an employment office and talks to one of the people at the office played by Matthew Lillard, who kind of goes through his file, seems to recognize his name, doesn't really say a whole lot about it, but says, hey, I think I have a job for you that uh, you'll be able to do. It has horrible hours, the pay isn't good, but it's work. And he denies him at first and goes back home, and the situation continues to ramp up with his family about losing custody. And finally, he calls Matthew Lillard back and says, fine, I'll do the job. And what we find out is the job is a night security guard office at this Freddy Fazbear's Pizza, which is essentially like Chuck E. Cheese when I was growing up. It's these creepy looking animatronic characters that no kids would ever find cute because Chuck E. Cheese was like horrifying. Those characters, there was nothing cute about them. It terrified me as a kid. And so you have these horrifying animatronic characters. These people would go in, bring their kids for pizza parties and to play games but it's completely abandoned the business went under and Matthew Lillard lets him know that the owner is sentimental about it he wants to keep the building but he can't run the business anymore and so he hires a security guard because there's been vandalism in the past and he wants to make sure none of the animatronics are damaged or that the buildings hurt in any way shape or form so he takes the job on and what you find out is that there's more to the animatronic characters than meets the eye as these animatronic characters come to life and start killing people that come into the Freddy Fazbear's Bears Pizza and the entire film is Mike trying to figure out what are these animatronic creatures, how are they able to move and operate freely, and can he escape them before they kill him. So as I said, I knew nothing about this before I went into the movie and I found myself entertained through this. 
Obviously, this is not breaking any new ground. We're not doing anything super crazy inventive with the storytelling. We're not doing anything crazy inventive with the way that this is structured. Horror films have been around for a very long time, and a lot of them follow a very similar formula. What I do like about this is for a game that now watching gameplay footage of is just a guy sitting in a security office and jump scares happen when the animatronic creatures come out from a hallway. You can't really function a full script on just one person sitting in a room doing nothing. You have to build something else up. And obviously I know the game has a lot of lore surrounding it, and I know there's been multiple iterations of the game to build the lore, but what I think the film does a nice job of is establishing that core structure between Mike and his sister, understanding the trauma that Mike faced as a young kid, how that plays into the film later on. I think it's handled really well early on. I think they did a nice job pacing it out because it's not like you can just drop the guy into the security office and have these animatronic creatures jump out at him for an hour and a half. You have to have some kind of story and some kind of structure to piece and hold it all together and I think the structure of the film is really well done. I think it keeps your attention and I think it's entertaining enough. As far as the horror elements go, it's relatively tame. It's PG-13. I think that's a lot of the complaints that people are having is it's not a straightforward horror film. But what I will say is horror elements that happen in this movie did impress me in the way that they're structured. There's some cheap throwaway jump scares, which for a game that has jump scares laden throughout it, that's not really surprising that they would incorporate that. But the things that did surprise me were moments where for a PG-13 film you have a person literally get split in half and they work using shadows instead of just a cutaway and hearing a noise you get like a shadowed representation of what happened and seeing the person split in half and I think having those implications makes the film scarier in those moments and especially for young kids who know about this property it's going to be creepy for them when they go watch it because it's obviously not a blood fest. There's not blood pouring out everywhere. They could make this concept incredibly violent, but they obviously strip it back because it's for a younger audience, and I can understand that. Some of the issues that I have with this movie, character motivations are weird. There's a police officer character introduced named Vanessa, who's the actress from the TV show You. I kept thinking of where I re remembered her from, and she was, the, uh, she was the girlfriend in the first season of You, and she shows up, and her motivation throughout the film are kind of strange to where you're kind of scratching your head like why are you doing these things and some of the writing surrounding her character isn't all that great I think the actress does a good job but I think some of the writing surrounding her character and the motivations aren't all that intelligent there's this babysitter character that's involved there's not really a whole lot that makes their character interesting they're just kind of there to service the plot along and so those moments kind of pulled me out a little bit where I'm like okay the writing here could be cleaned up they could do something else to keep the story a little bit more immersive but what I really like is all the scenes with the animatronics because the detail on these puppets and the costumes that these actors are wearing is incredible they really mocked up these characters from the game and did a perfect translation into a live-action film and I love the way they move I love how expressive their faces are I love the way that you can see the internal parts of the animatronics like the chattering teeth they explain at one point that some of the animatronic characters have these like internal springs that like hold things into place that you think if a person's body got in there it'd get all mangled. And that's the thing I like about this is it's a very, the concept to this movie is very dark when you find out what is going on with these animatronics and what happened it's it's very disturbing and that's what I like about it so much is that the concept is very disturbing especially for something that's targeted at a much younger audience and I think having to juggle that in a PG-13 movie that they do the best that they can like I said I think the, the biggest issue with this film that prevents it from being great is that there's a lot of issues with just the nonsensical nature of a lot of the movie like the way things happen Mike starts sleeping while he's on the job and he sees the visions of these little kids his brother was abducted when he was younger and it, the the logic of all of it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense they don't go into a, a lot of detail as to how he's able to have these visions about these things later on in the movie it's kind of just like a suspend your disbelief there are some moments in this that are incredibly cheesy especially towards the end there's a scene where the young girl does a drawing that's like a big crux of the entire film that's kind of corny. I mean, for a film targeted towards a younger audience, I feel like I can excuse a little bit more of that. 
And despite the fact that this isn't a great movie by any means, it's a load of fun and it's one of those just you could turn your brain off and watch a movie about animatronics killing people. And to me, that's exactly what I expected from this movie. I didn't expect it to be a masterpiece. I didn't expect it to be the next great horror film. I just expected it to be a fun, entertaining hour and 40 minute movie and I was entertained through most of it despite the qualms that I have I still think it's a fun movie that if you had an interest in seeing you're gonna have some level of fun with it so have you seen Five Nights at Freddy's did you love it did you hate it leave me a comment down below and let me know what you thought I thought this movie was perfectly fine I thought it was a lot of fun I don't think it's fantastic by any means it has a lot of problems but it's still an enjoyable hour and 40 minute experience as always if you can like the video and subscribe to the channel it helps me out a lot and lets me know what type of content you're looking for and as always, everyone, thank you so much for watching and have a great rest of your day.